D11 Sports presents St. Luke's Sports Medicine Game of the Week. Welcome to Whitehall High School. I'm joined by Bron Holland up here in the booth along with Sean L Riley, our producer. It's a double header today that we covered the first game. Palmerton went on to win this, but Palmerton's back in action tonight against Saucon Valley. So an exciting match to see. This is a Colonial League semi semifinals presented by St. Luke's as always. You kindly called this a booth. It doesn't feel like a booth, but we'll make, we'll make do. It's great. It's great here at Whitehall High School. Yeah, I know. we got cinder blocks in the background, but <laughs> the environment in front of us is definitely going to be electric and great here ahead of us. So once again, welcome to Whitehall High School. We're happy to have you guys listening in, and it should be an exciting game. So more to come from there. Let's start by bringing you guys the keys to this game. And our keys have been all over the board from Coach Snyder <laughs> and Coach Egan. So good spread here. District 11, St. Luke's Sports Medicine keys to the game tonight for Saucon Valley and head coach Brett Snyder in his second year. Limiting the turnovers. They cannot allow big runs by Palmerton tonight. Secondly, limiting transition points. They have to get back on defense, stop the ball. For Palmerton, first uh, year coach, Joe Egan, keys to the game for him and the Blue Bombers. They need to win the rebounding battle. Saucon Valley is very good on the boards, very physical. And they also must, st must stop the Panthers in transition. So it should be a great matchup here tonight. We got three veteran officials uh, on the game. Andy Donatelli right now at half court talking uh, with the captains and coaches. It's going to be a great one here. Yeah, that it will be for sure. And uh, once again, we have to sp speak to both coaches before the game. Uh, Coach uh, Snyder. Second year in coach, a uh, great uh, successful first year, we would say, has lost to Notre Dame in the Colonial League Finals and District Finals, sadly. Came up a little bit short, but his team's back, trying to be competitive again. Palmerton having a great season as well, trying to get it moving, and they are 13-4. and four. Now both coaches just preach just play like it's 0-0 here. No records beforehand. This is a new game, new team. Just play like they know how to play, and I think that's exactly what they're going to do. Is there anything else we should look at? here Ron. well there's there's a lot we can we can chop up here and dissect but i think you know w what this is going to come down to is you know obviously everything's on the line championship uh birth friday night at freedom high school if you're palmerton you certainly want to make it a boy girl double header that would be great for for the blue bombers if you're Saucon, the second year coach brett snyder uh you obviously want to get get there and and, uh, and win the game. So uh, I think the first team to come out here tonight and, and settle down and relax and just play is the team that's going to be uh, come out victorious. Yeah, that definitely will probably be the case. Just to be patient. We saw the Lady Bombers beforehand just be patient and got through there. And both coaches expressed being patient. So we'll be bringing your starting five coming up shortly as the clock winds down. So it can be a very exciting matchup here. And once again, D11 Sports thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President and Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley and Allentown PA for sponsorships of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor, Allentown PA, 18101. Morgan Stanley Smith, Barley LLC member, SIPC. Can't do this. This fine program, D11 Sports, without our sponsors. So please uh, patronize our sponsors who uh, do this great program for uh, people like yourself. Uh, I was just talking to our cameraman. He's like, you know, he's only like, how old are you, 19? 18? 18, yep. And he's like, you know, uh, he's only 18. I said, uh, yeah, he's doing a great job. I wish they had this program when uh, when I was in school. It's, it's really great. Yeah, it's a great thing. And... Looking forward to covering another game with D11 as we head into our starting five for Saucon Valley first. As you see on your screen, the starting lineup for 
both teams for Saucon Valley. We have Braden Weiss, 6'2 senior. Constantly Donahue, Jack Robertson, Adam Clark, and Caleb Grimm. Jack Robertson, a junior, a sophomore, had a big impact last year with this team. On Palmerton, we have Matt Mahalik, Jacob Grimmis, Aiden Leister, Braden Hooser, and Zach Anthony. All seniors that have been here before know exactly what they're doing. And two one, over 1,000 point scorers with Hoosier and Mahalik. Mahalik's got 15.30 in his career and Hoosier 12.86. So both know what they're doing and both experienced teams here. Should be a very exciting match. You make, a, you make a great point, Chase. Palmerton, five seniors. So you would expect them, you know, with the experience to come out here and, and play well. Obviously, as, as we pointed out before, there was a coaching transition and and uh, so that certainly will, will probably play a little bit into, into this this evening. Um, but Palmerton is out of play. Like you said, 2,000 point scores. Uh, they just, they're going to come out here and try to match Salkin's physicality. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to, not to interrupt you, but I'm looking forward to the, the, the pace that's going to be played here tonight. I think Salkin would be fine with, you know, walking the ball up the court, limiting uh, Palmerton to one shot and done banging the glass and then, you know, walking the ball up the floor. Palmerton, on the other hand, you know, has some players and they want to get out and transition, get the ball up, get it to the basket. And uh, it's going to be a, a contrasting styles here tonight. Yeah, and definitely going to be competitive, high intensity and fast. As Palmerton's bringing the energy already around half court as they prepare and play. And our Colonial League semifinals brought to you by St. Luke. So excited to see what's going on here as we head into the tip. Should be another great game here at Whitehall High School. And I'm happy to be here, Bron. I'm thrilled to be here. Glad I got the call yesterday. Wow. Snow messed everything up. So really looking forward to it. Yeah, and it should be definitely as high, high pace as they come. Both these teams competitive and know how to play in these big games with veteran players. So exciting as they come as we head into the tip off. And here we go. The tip is all lined up. And Salkin wins the toss. Robertson, their leader on this offense. Physical already. And Donahue gets blocked. Two hard screens and a contested shot at the basket. Setting the tone early, it's gonna be physical. And Anthony on that back line, kind of lost track of where he was, dribbled the ball out of bounds, but early game. Good start here for both squads. Yeah, I wouldn't say good start, just a start <laughs> here. But exciting to see what comes. It is a start. Palmerton in man-to-man. -man. Clark down low, going to work, finishes. Salkin with the first basket of the night. Nice move by Clark. And once again, we see Leicester controlling this offense, giving it to Mahalik. Mahalik through the lane. Couldn't get a finish on the hop step. Officials are letting both teams play tonight. Uh, First two possessions on both ends, there's a lot of contact at the basket. No call, which I like. Coaches like that, players like that. Let them play here a little bit tonight. Yeah, Robertson just controlling the tempo, like you said, finding the open man, and he does. Caleb Grimm sets the open shot. Now they're up four, nothing on Palmerton. Salkin leads here with 6.38 to go. Grimm averaging six points a game. He came off that screen, foul line extended, nice jumper. And let's see what Palmerton has to do to answer. Hoosier trying to get in someone. Salkin, good defense. Steal there by Braden Weiss. Robertson pushing the ball. Attacks the rim. Won't fall. Back up the other way. Palmerton goes. The shot falls for Mahalik. He does such a great job leaking out there. Palmerton got the rebound, hit ahead. Mahalik finished in the paint. Nice, nice finish. He has great body control, Chase, if you watch him. Donald Palmerton's leaking out again. And there we go, another pass up court. 
quite an answer. Leicester puts it in, 4-4 tie here with quick two passes there. If you're sulking, you just can't get uh, beat. Obviously, Palmerton's leaking a, a guy out at half court. They're going to have to send somebody back to stop those transition buckets. Robertson goes down low, doesn't get the basket, comes down awkward on his ankle, but Palmerton's coming the other way. Malik trying to go up, gets a tough finish inside. And there's an example of that body control I was talking about. Jumped up, squared his shoulders, finished, great job. Yeah, he's showing how much of a score he is. I mean, 15, 30 points in his career for tonight already. Game just starting, pass stolen there by Leicester. And the fadeaway for Mahalik is good. Time that, out. that time Mahalik didn't attack. Two dribbles, middle of the paint. Beautiful jump, st uh, jump stop, jump shot to give uh, the Blue Bombers a four point lead here early, Chase. Yeah, and uh, definitely great game management by Mahalik. He's got six points already and we haven't even been going that long. We have 4.59 to go in the first. And Palmerton down for uh, the start. Quick bounces, just reset mentally and uh, truly showed uh, what they're made of here. Yeah, like I said, the two the two easy buckets in transition where they leaked out, you know, that, was, that four points was big, gave them some momentum that they needed. They were lacking early. Yeah, and definitely eager to see what Coach Snyder worked up in that uh, playoff match. Jack Robertson hobbling up the court a little bit to start, but ankle brace on his right ankle. Hopefully does not affect him later on in the game. Constantly Donahue trying to work with the ball a little bit here. Something to open up. Salkin came out, didn't execute what Coach Snyder had uh, drawn up in the timeout. So now they'll get into their motion stuff. And Donahue once again comes with the ball, resets the offense. Back to Weiss. Weiss hits Robertson. Spin move, floater is good. Robinson with a great spin move, averaging 17 points. Game, 23 three-pointers on the year, but nice move there, taking it to the basket. Mahalik doesn't get that one to fall, and Robertson's quick to push it up the court. Pass it out to Donahue. Thinks about taking it, but Robertson will take the corner three. Rims out, and the rebound by Anthony down low. And Palmerton will go the other way. Salkin playing in there man-to-man. -man. And there's a hard floater there through the contact. And Adam Clark comes up with it. Robertson flips it up to Donahue, who gets in trouble water. Back the other way, hits the deck hard. Mihalik with an easy layup there. 10-6, Palmerton leads. Palmerton opportunistic there. Taking advantage of a Saucon Valley mishap, miscue. And definitely waiting to see what the offensive game plan is for Saucon. Haven't had a set one yet. Definitely been all over the map with their game plan. As the play comes in from Coach Snyder, Robertson holds half court. Ball gets passed around, down low to Clark. Clark trying to go to work, passes it over, and Caleb Grimm is fouled. Salkin trying to do a little high-low inside game there. We'll have the ball underneath the basket. And the sub will come in. Elijah Miller will sub Robertson out. Probably to get his ankle checked out. He's hobbling pretty good there. And the inbound there to Clark. Clark right up. And the fadeaway shot, almost Dirk style there, falls. Dirk style, nice touch. Rimmed in, 10-8. Hoosiers three, rattles out. They gotta communicate on the rebound, but Salkin comes up with it. He did a nice job there coming off the screen, firing from three. He can hit that shot, obviously. Another high low. And there was a block down low by Trey Stoller. And a block there, and Salkin comes up with it. Caleb Grimm. 
And here comes Elijah Miller and the Saucon Panthers. And Donahue looking for it, passes it off to Weiss. To Miller here. Now back down low. Clark trying to go to work, can't quite get what he wants. Snyder's gonna reset his team with 139, down two to the Bombers at 10-8. And trying once again, driving, passing out, nothing's getting going. Weiss in the corner with two on him. Finds the open man in Elijah Miller. Donahue now has the ball. Donahue looking, goes up with it. Can't quite get it to fall. Salkin ran like a minute 15 off the shot clock there. Or shot clock, off the clock there. And got a good shot. Got a stop, now they're attacking on uh, offense again. Elijah Miller controls the ball, gets it to Braden Weiss. His shot, slightly off. Gets into Palmerton, Palmerton's bringing the ball up. Mahalik gonna attack. Shot. That was definitely a foul. No call there, should have been. Maybe Donahue bringing it down. They have the numbers, will they use them? Weiss loses the ball. Mahalik back the other way, layup is good. Six points off, we called that cherry picking. I don't know what the term is nowadays, but when you hang back and look for the outlet, six points for Palmerton, it's very effective if you don't cover it. Yeah, cherry picking is usually something I try to do at the park when I'm getting tired, but <laughs> we see it here in the Colonial League semifinals. They're not tired. That's st strategically he's hanging out there looking to get some, some leak outs. Salkin not, not taking great shots here these last two possessions. And Robertson will come back in for Miller. And Salkin's down four with 2.3 to go to the Palmerton Blue Bombers here. Still have the ball as Braden Weiss is coming to inbound. I mean, we've definitely seen what Braun has said. Intensity, floor, everyone's hitting the floor, playing hard. And I'm eager to see what comes next. And here comes the inbound, finally calls for it. Donahue down low, off the inbound. Nice inbounds play by Saucon Valley. They just made a cut, diagonal, wide open to the basket, layup. Palmerton did not communicate there defensively. I don't know if that was supposed to be a switch or what, but a couple of the players were. Uh, and you'll see it here, just nice backdoor cut. Hozier falls asleep, gets beat backdoor. And once again, we see 12-10, Palmerton barely leading in another competitive match at the Colonial League semifinals. This game is brought to you by Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of providing the Lehigh Valley with convenient and reliable home heating oil delivery. Proud to support all District 11 athletics. Mention you heard of us on D11 Sports Game Broadcast and receive $25 off your next oil delivery. I got to call Dan Reichenbach, see if he delivers the banger. I'd like that 25% uh, discount. Dan Reichenbach played at Salisbury. Since you're young, I'll educate you. A great player at Salisbury. Three-point shooter. Kids were good, ath great athletes. One went to Rhode Island track, jumper. So uh, we appreciate he and his family constantly giving back to the Colonial League and District 11. And for keeping D11 alive, we like it because D11 keeps us with new student reporters eager to get into the sports media field and broadcasting. Just a great thing as we see Palmerton go back to the basket. And we see Hoosier battling to get a basket there, and he does. Relentless on the glass, paid off. And, and the one thing about Palmerton's guards, they both rebound the ball extremely well. Malik with seven rebounds a game, and Hozier with five. When your guards rebound, that's a tremendous lift. That it is, and Robertson trying to get something going with the Salkin offense. Only down four here. Now when he drives in, he seems to get trapped right away. So there should be an open man coming somewhere. He goes to Weiss. Robertson still hobbling though. And Donahue 
will pass back out to Robertson. Who's going to regroup once again. Just taking their time here and getting the play there they want. And Robertson will take the three. Rattles out. And Nobody on the glass there for Salkin. Palmerton gets the rebound and attacks. And the three here does not fall. Robertson going to push. Braden Weiss right away needs contact and the foul from Aiden Leister. Aiden did a, a good job of recovering, making sure they did not give up a layup in transition. Corey Sirfoss comes in for the Palmerton Blue Bombers as Salkin will be on offense now here on the inbound from Weiss. Deep inbound, red like a book, but back down. Good pass by Robertson down to Adam Clark for the basket. Clark did a good job after that play, was developing to stay in the post, got the ball back immediately and finished. And Palmerton once again trying to run this high speed offense, almost two polar opposite teams. Anthony makes the hard cut, basket does not fall. Some contact down low, but the refs are letting it play out. Donahue. And it's continuing going down the court, a little hand checking. Just a little frustration for missing the layup. Adam Clark's shot takes a double bounce off the rim, almost falls, but Mihalik and Palmerton coming the other way. Mid range shot from Mihalik. Can't spin in, but Clark comes down with the rebound. Donahue bringing it up here with 5.41 to go. Down two, 14 to 12. Two Palmerton Blue Bombers. Again, you're seeing Salkin style. That, you know, they're fine with passing it around. 30 seconds a minute, and then trying to pound it inside. Steal there by Mahalik. And he's letting them know about it. Got to be careful. Don't want to get a taunting call here. And that is very true. And to keep your composure as athletes, it's one of the main things you got to do, even when the games get tough, because, you know, you're putting your emotion, blood, sweat, and tears into this sport. D11 Sports, thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President, Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley and Allentown PA for sponsorship of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor, Allentown PA, 18101. Morgan Stanley Smith, Barney LLC, member SIPC. And I, and I must point out that as the night has gone on, the reading of the sponsorships have been outstanding. The transition, perfect, smooth, love it. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> a few weeks ago. I mean, you're we getting papers handed out. You're like, you're like in school. Like, it's like a research paper coming at you. And H handling it very well. Yeah. But, you know, my mom, one time I went home after doing a bunch of reads, she said, oh, I think you could be a salesman for St. Luke's. But, you know what? <laughs> in broadcasting, we kind of have to have you that sell. sales. It's all smoke and mirrors, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and we resume here. Mahalik trying to keep Palmerton up. Swings it out. Pump fake. Mahalik trying to get to the basket. Screen from Anthony. Mahalik hits Hooser. Another screen from Anthony. Blocked. Look it up. You got him long. Caleb Grimm's block. Donahue looking. Robertson sees the screen, gonna take the floater. Kept the body there by Anthony. Could have been contact, but Mihalik's going the other way. Threw the contact again, but went straight up, so no call. And he received Elijah Miller going the other way. Braden Weiss's floater is good. Again, officiating has been extremely consistent. Calling it the same way, they're letting them play. Zero complaints. Gotta love it, physical game. And here we go. We see the same thing. Contact again. And now, with that said, uh, Chase, I think I would be yelling and screaming right now at the officials, <laughs> trying to get calls for my guys right here. But uh, veteran crew, they're experienced. It's a way I, I personally enjoy the game to be officiated. Yeah, very true. I mean, we like to see competitive games. I mean, we don't want to see foul goes too far out of hand, but Mahalik. Looking for 
The shot rims out, but he stays consistent down low, and there's the call for Aiden Leister, who's gonna go to the line and get an and one opportunity. Those are those energy hustle plays. And you'll see here, Aiden going to the basket, gets the first shot up, rolls out, but stays with it. And as an offensive player, you're the first person who knows if you missed the shot, so which he did, and he immediately went after it. Got to put back, looking for a three-point player. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that tonight. Uh, when these experienced guards, they know they're maybe they miss, and they go right back at it. And one opportunity is no good. Salkin comes down with it, quick to get it up, but Robertson will slow it right down. Weiss calling for the uh, pass on the end side, but Robertson doesn't see it. Robertson once again just taking this good old time, controlling this game. Only down two with 3.34 to go. 16 to 14, Palmerton leads narrowly. Weiss tries to get it, won't go. Once again, Salkin doesn't have anybody on the glass. And Hoosiers three is no good, rebounded by Robertson, gives it to Donahue. Back to Weiss, comes down with it, and that's gonna be a foul. Braden Weiss going to the line. And we talked about Palmerton being the team that wants to push, but here you can see Salkins getting in ahead. Pass ahead. Brandon does a great job first catching the ball, but then getting it up on the backboard. And Weiss averaging nine point, almost 10 points a game, 24 threes on the season. Yeah, Weiss doing a great job. And does it again, 6-1 there, 16-15. 3.14 to go. Subs are going to come out here, and Palmerton's going to look to change things up, keep their lead alive, and keep this team full of energy. Leicester bringing the ball down, checking around. Looking to get Mahalik the ball in low. Logan Anthony gets the ball down low to Mahalik, but couldn't get it to quite fall, but he'll go to the line. It's uh, not every day that you post up your guard, but when he's one of the best post-up players on your team, and I'm sure the league, you want to get the ball down to him low. Or anywhere on the floor for that matter. Once again, sinks the first one. Mahalik, a vicious scorer with 11 already just in the second quarter here, 254. And sinks both under extreme noises from the jungle over there. <laughs> yes, they are considered the Salkin Valley jungle. It's kind of their student section. Cool name if you ask me. Robertson uh, looking to do something here with this team. Down three at this point. And they go back to reset after a failed pass to, well, failed play, I should say, to Caleb Grimm. That's a mess right there. <laughs> Definitely some bodies hitting the floor and... There's the call and it'll be Wow, a lot of action right there. Uh, half court chuck falls, but foul whistle before it. So here comes the inbound for the Palmerton Blue Bombers. Salkin tried to run that elevator screen. It was just a bunch of guys running into each other. Yeah, it's been very physical tonight. Leicester's shot, won't go, rebounded. Robertson pushing. He's got the numbers, sets the feet. And it's gonna go. That's a great call there by John yeah. Hymans. Feet were not set in time, and Robertson's going to go to the line. Basket counts. And a veteran official waited waited to the last second to make the call. No question, a block. And Robertson, once again, we've said it before, he's their lead scorer, 16.80 he averages. And he goes line for a tie game at 18 if he makes this one. And I jinxed it, I'm sorry. But 18-17, uh, he comes down with it though, and scores, so hey, he got two out of it. Now they're up by one. Salkin leads for the first time of the game, 19-18 with two minutes to go into the second. 
Basketball is a game of mistakes. You try to limit them, and you just cannot make mistakes on the boxing out of the free throw line. It always comes back to kill you. And now we see Palmerton hoping for a shot. And there's the shot from Halleck. Won't go. Rebounded. Salkins Lanks giving Palmerton some problems. And there it is. There's the charge call. Feet were set there. And Caleb Grimm took a hell of a hit there. Nice job taking it to the basket. Feet set. Took the charge. As you said, it takes some guts to step up there and take a charge, which he did. And Robertson with 1.20 to go, up by one here, 19-18, Saucon leads. Let's see what they go to. Robertson can't get the bounce off the rim. And here we go, Palmerton on the back. Hoosier passes, and it's a three good from Jacob Grammis. Had him earlier in the year against Notre Dame. Hit a couple big shots late in the second half. To keep him in it. I think that was a, might have been a double overtime game that was earlier in the season at yeah. Palmerton. Yeah, very rough game for um, Palmerton. Gave them their loss there. Almost gave Notre Dame their first loss. Spin move by Braden Weiss and takes contact there by Three players, it looks like, and Weiss is going to shoot. I think he's going to. I think he's going to. The foul was called on the floor. I think they're. I thought he. I thought he pointed underneath the basket, but. Yeah, I Don, mean. Donatelli is giving him the, the free throws. When he first made the call, he turned and pointed, and I thought he was. That's where he was indicating they were going to have the ball, but. Brayden Brayden Weiss averaging 9.6 on the season. And any time I bring up a stat, it's usually not good for the players. But Mahalik's going the other way with 20 seconds to go. Palmerton leads narrowly by one here, 21-20 at Whitehall High School. See what Palmerton runs here with uh, 12 seconds before the half up one. And they're going to let their one of their top players, Mahalik, get it. And he's going to try to get a shot off here. He's reading the screen. And Robertson gets a shot off, but it won't go. Certainly, I don't think that's a shot you want from Palmerton there. Uh, something broke down with the execution and uh, forced, forced them to take a difficult shot here before half. And we're going to send it down to Dave. All right, Coach, uh, thoughts on the first half? Yeah, I thought uh, both teams played well. We took some uh, rush, four shots on offense, which we have, we have an aggressive group of scorers, so that's expected. But uh, we just got to settle in. The defense has been great, so uh, just continue our focus, and I think things will turn out for, well for us. And Mahalik, you know, he's getting his points uh, second half. Um, what are you going to do to try to get some of the other guys involved? Yeah, I think they're doing a good job of collapsing on defense. So we just have to kick out, make the extra pass, and attack the closeouts. But uh, I'm confident we'll make the adjustment. Thank you, Coach. Good luck, second half. Okay, thank you. All right, back up to you guys. Thank you, Dave. And once again, set it there. We'll see it out of the half. We're here at Whitehall High School. I'm joined by Bron Holland and Sean Riley, our producer. And this is uh, the set Colonial League semifinals between Palmerton Blue Bombers and the Saucon Valley, Valley Panthers presented by St. Luke's. I'll see you guys on the next half. It's St. Luke's Children's Hospital, ready to help all kids. They're keeping kids healthy, fixing us up, making us feel better, helping kids be the best they can be because it's about us. The kids, it's St. Luke's Children's Hospital. St. Luke's Children's Hospital is helping kids with everything from routine checkups to specialized care. It's here. It's great. Yeah. At St. Luke's Orthopedic Care, you can trust us with your hands, feet, 
shoulders, hips, and knees. Because healthy bones and joints mean you can do more. You can trust us to recommend the right approach to care, including joint sparing treatments and therapies. And when surgery is the only choice, we offer options to help you heal faster, including technology-assisted joint replacements and muscle-sparing hip surgery. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust, now more than ever. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. And I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. Start moving again. You can trust St. Luke's to provide excellence in orthopedic care. St. Luke's is the region's leader in robotic orthopedic surgery for knee replacements and offers the latest hip navigation technology using digital guidance for hip replacement surgery. Orthopedic innovations that allow for new levels of precision and safety while advancing patient care. St. Luke's, the orthopedic care you trust now more than ever. This game is brought to you by Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of providing the Lehigh Valley with convenient and reliable home heating oil delivery. Proud to sponsor all District 11 athletics. Mention you heard of us on D11 Sports Game Broadcast and receive $25 off your next oil delivery. Yes, that's $25 off. D11 Sports thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President, Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley and Allentown, PA for sponsorship of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor, Allentown, PA, 18101. Morgan Stanley, Smith Barney, LLC member, SIPC. And back to the game after our two sponsors that I'm very thankful for because once again they keep D11 bringing you guys broadcast and giving students like me an opportunity which I'm so thankful uh, for and it's just a great time to, for me to be able to broadcast and get the experience before you know coming up and going to college next year. Real life practical experience there's nothing better you yeah. only learn by doing and once again, we've had a very exciting game here at Whitehall High School in the St. Luke's Colonial, presented our D11 broadcast presented by St. Luke's to the Colonial League semifinals between Palmerton Blue Bombers and the Saucon Valley Panthers. And once again, it's 21 to 20. Palmerton leads narrowly. So I'm gonna bring you guys some quick standings here around the league just to see what we're going into. And after, you know, across the way and the other part of the league, you're gonna see your other champion that'll both meet on freedom so the winner of this game and the winner of that game will meet so Notre Dame 18 and 0 Saucon 13 and 5 so Saucon Valley playing here Northwestern going to be playing Notre Dame Palmerton 13 and 4 so we have our standings and our likely championship if I had to predict I'm going to go with Notre Dame and this game I'm not going to pick because you know no 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 you got to you got to take a stance there's no middle of the fence stuff. You got to take a pick, brother. Go out on a limb. You know, I'm gonna go Sauk and Valley. There's no money on this. This is just friendly, friendly wager in this booth. I'm gonna go with Sauk and Valley, with my, uh, I don't know, almost hometown team, the neighboring squad. <laughs> so you're gonna go Sauk and Valley, Notre Dame tomorrow night or Friday night. Yep. All right. Should be. I mean, Notre Dame. You know, they've been doing well all season. I mean, Palmerton's played very close matchups with them over time, double over time, you know, just they're both competitive teams. So, you know what, anything can happen in this next quarter, but we're definitely going to have some uh, great things. But It's all about playing, you know, peaking at the right time. And, uh, you know, you got you got to always play your best basketball come uh, end of the season, playoff time districts. And, uh, you know, we're going to see here in the second half who's playing their best basketball. For me, it's a tale like two different tapes here. You got to be careful what you say these days because I'm sure there's people listening are going to call and complain. But uh, I think Salkin Valley has the advantage inside. I think their their bigs are giving Palmerton some trouble driving. They you know they've had a couple block shots. And on the, but the, on the other hand, I think Palmerton has the advantage uh, with their two guards. 
um, who can just create. Puts a, they put a lot of pressure on you in the fast break. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see who wins out. I think Salkin's guards are uh, are competent enough to get the job done. I think it's just going to be a matter of who is going to play smarter basketball these last 16 minutes. You heard uh, Coach Egan say at, at halftime uh, he wasn't happy with some of their shot selection. So we'll see what what adjustments they made at halftime here. And uh, uh, we're 16 minutes away to a trip to Freedom High School. Doesn't get any better than this, Chase. Yeah, definitely. This is uh, peak playoff basketball. And it's going to be exciting to see. And uh, exactly what you said, I think Palmerton has just as big of a shot as Salkin does to win this game. They're both very competitive, as we see. They're only up by one point here. So this is going to be a very exciting second half as Salkin comes out after a long chat in the locker room with Coach Snyder. But what do you, what do you think Coach Snyder said in there that Salkin could work on and maybe get themselves back in this game, even though they are in this game? I think if you're sulking, you just have to go back to what they talked about in pregame. They have to take away transition baskets. Um, you know, it was one of Salkin's keys. And what, and what did Palmerton have? At least six points uh, with leak outs in transition. You know, it's a 20. You take that, it's 2015. You take those six points away. So I look for Salkin to make those adjustments in the second half. Easier said than done when you have 2,000-point scorers, you know, leaking out and looking to put that much pressure on your D, uh, but we'll see. And that we will. We have a minute and 33 to our second half, and definitely another, I don't know, I'd say eager to watch half. I mean, packed stands here, which is great to see. I mean, Whitehall was not the original host for this Colonial League semifinals. It was supposed to be Catasauqua, but I'm glad to have a double header here with a, a mixed double header, I should say as we saw Palmerton girls win earlier and take their trip to freedom. I was and looking forward to Caddy though. AD Tom Mole puts on a great spread. A lot of food for the media, usually a nice taco bar of some sort. Bob Hartman did a nice job here tonight at, at Whitehall. Uh, he went with the more traditional uh, crock pot type of foods. And, uh, but he had some nice, we haven't talked about Valentine's Day yet. He had some nice Valentine's Day cupcakes. Uh, you'll learn this when you get older. But uh, don't take advice from me. I forgot. I, I don't didn't get my wife a Valentine's Day present. But remind me to take two of those big cupcakes on the way home. I'm gonna wrap them up and give them to my wife when I get home. I think that is. I'm a, sentimental, Chase. Sentimental. I, I think that is a great idea because I mean, take one for your mom. I don't know if she like cupcakes, but you know, <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a good your idea. Your dad? No. Who doesn't like a cupcake? My, my dad doesn't really eat sweets. I know it's kind of weird. I mean, I love sweets. But I will definitely take one for her right. just because I know she's tuning in and listening. There you go. So, yeah. But you know what? Valentine's Day, we're happy to be here covering basketball for you guys as Salkin Valley comes back onto the court. As a coach for almost 30 years, I've spent every val I've been fortunate to spend every Valentine's Day in the gym. High low right away, Salkin coming out. Inside. Donahue with a tough Beautiful basket. Beautiful move by Donahue. And let's see what Palmerton can do. I mean, it's going to be a back and forth second half here. As we see, Leister passes it down to Mahalik. And rebounded there by Caleb Graham, who's done his fair share of all around basketball tonight. Donahue gets popped loose, but gets the ball back. No look pass to Braden Weiss in the corner. Rimmed out. And now we see Braden Hoosier going the other way. Gets it to Mihalik, flips it over. Grimes goes down low. He did a great job boxing out last time, and now he comes down on the offensive end, catches low and finishes. Great back-to-back -back possessions. Yeah, Grammis with another crucial time make there. He had the three before half, and now he's back down doing another thing. But on the Salkin side of it, Donahue and Robertson going back and forth here. And looking for the sell there. I think it was, a, I think he definitely flopped. Good no call. A lot of times officials will fall for that. All three officials did not fall for it. Just like you said, the senior officiating going on here is uh, great to see. As you see Anthony getting the ball moving around. 
to Gramis, back to Anthony. And now they get it to their scorer, Mahalik. To Gramis, who will pass to Anthony for the mid-range. Pump fake, drives to the basket, and it goes. Zach Anthony's first score of the game, averaging 2.7 on the year. Anthony under control, caught it, took his time, nice ball fake, got to the basket, finished. And here we see Salkin trying to get something going. Robertson going to run the offense like he's been all night. Salkin down one, 25-24 with 5.38 to go in the third. Mid-range jumper from Adam Clark, won't go, rebounded by Weiss. And the contact. Ball staying here with Salkin. Alec very aggressive there. S slapped in for the ball. Andy Donatelli says he got a piece of arm. Salkin ball underneath. And the inbound once again. Weiss has been controlling the inbounds all night. Goes to Donahue in the open for the wide open three. Pump fakes. Goes to work. Flips it all the other way. And the shot goes up. Clark will take the foul, though. Thought that had a chance. Clark got it up off the window. Didn't go, but he will be on the foul line. Clark averaging 8.4 points a game and doing his thing. Once again, we also have our uh, sister broadcast going on, Northwestern versus Notre Dame at Catasauqua, like we mentioned. It just about to be tip off there. That would be our JV team, Chase. Our JV teams at Caddy, Allen, uh, Coach Tennis. You know what? I like I like how you uh, <laughs> work with Al. <laughs> Al is at the end of the day my boss and mentor. So <laughs> that's all right. I'll crack the jokes. You can just smile. I'll tell him you didn't laugh. And I'm gonna laugh at that one. Graham is four three. And as I mentioned a couple minutes ago, he was the killer that second half earlier in the season. Made some key shots in the second half of the Notre Dame game. Now Salkin down two, 28-26 with 4.58 to go in the third. Palmerton with the lead. Robertson trying to get something going here. Passes back out and right through the lane, Adam Clark. I think, it, I think it's critical here that neither team allows the other to get out to a, to a big lead. Oh. And look to be Robertson got a little contact, but I think it's going to stay White's ball. Yep, Palmerton will hold ball. And Coach Schneider's waving his hands and wanting to the call there. A lot of contact, but again, consistent. That's the thing. There it is, the mid-range shot bounces around. And going. For Salkin, Robertson getting active inside. And for a guard, it's not usually what you see, but it's good to see a guard putting their body on the line to try to come up here. We're all tied up here with 4.15 to go. Robertson spin move, loses the ball off his knee. The ambitious trying to take Mihalik off the dribble. And they had the size, had the bodies downside, just went a little over then up top. And here comes our replay. Well, you'll see Mihalik just has such a great motor. He sprints in from the top, from three-point line to get the rebound while everybody else on both teams just stood around. He outworked everybody, and it paid off. Mihalik, first free throw won't go. But averaging 21.4 on the season. Has 12 tonight. Will he make a 13? And he does. Palmerton leads narrowly by one, 29-28, with four minutes to go in the third. Now it's gonna be interesting to see what Salkin brings to the table. They've been bringing a different type offense coming out of the half. So we're gonna see maybe same thing, screens up top, shots on the wings, but Interesting, to say the least. Donahue's going to go to work. Passes out. The shot is good. Caleb Grimm. Donahue created that play, driving to the basket. Help came. He kicked. Open jump shot. 
And here we see Braden Hoosier commanding, being the floor general for this offense. Mahalik to the lane, gets stuffed. Goes up again for another angle. It's good. Sticks with it there. On that second rebound, he left his feet. He just saw where the opening was to get the ball to the basket. As I said before, he can hang in the air in a great body control, and he showed it there. And the ball does not fall, but Adam Clark will go to the line on that foul. The foul was on Logan Anthony. That was a collision at the rim. Clark and Anthony. And we'll see what Adam Clark can do. Averaging 8.4 on the year, 251. Palmerton leads, and it rims out. Salkin Valley student section getting some TV time. Love it. And timeout called. We've talked to uh, Dave Micah, and we, we've, take some, we've taken some precautionary measures for after the game so that we don't have our, uh, our guests stolen at half court. Yeah, let's hope that doesn't We're happen gonna again. We're going to set up a little perimeter. We're going to funnel player or coach right to Dave at half court, and uh, we might need you to box out. Can you box out? I know you're a track guy. You're quick. Can you run? What, what, what? I need to know where, where position we can put you at. Yeah, don't worry. I, I, I can do it. I can box out. I'm not much of a shot. I've always been a rebound guy. All right. But uh, we don't need you to shoot. We've got plenty of points sitting right here. We just need you to be a team player, brother. Yeah, and we've seen lots of that tonight from both sides of the court. Great segue. You're going to be good at this. Very good. Continue. And uh, definitely both sides of the ball have been moved very well. Robertson's been passing the ball well on uh, looks like a somewhat – bum-ish ankle, but hasn't been affecting him much, been able to get off his feet. Mahalik's been the scorer with his teammate and partner in crime, Braden Hoosier as well. So both these teams work very well in pairs, quads, even using the whole team to stay united and just be solid. And now with the chance to tie Adam Clark, his last free throw here. And it is good, tied up at 31 here with 2.51 to go in the third. You know, every change, every time I look up at the scoreboard, I, I expect to see one team or the other with a, with a bigger lead, but it always seems to be tighter within one. Now, Salkin couldn't come down with the rebound on Mahalik's shot. And now we get to see Hoosier trying to go to work. And he gets blocked on the hop step there. Grimm does a great job coming over at the last minute, little rim protection. And the inbound there to Staller, back to Hoosier. Feet never left the ground. Halleck will drive in. And there is the call. Halleck's going to go to the line. But once again, D11 Sports, thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President, Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley and Allentown PA for sponsoring of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353. Look at it at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor, Allentown, PA. 18101 Morgan Stanley Smith, Barney LLC, member SIPC. And in my short ad break there, Halleck <laughs> nails the first free throw. On to the second. Halleck hits it again. That puts him at 17 on the night on pace to probably keep his scoring average up. But Salkin is looking to have an answer here. Donahue trying to work something, gets it back to their court general themselves. Robertson flips it back. Weiss tries to make a cut. Two cuts go by. Didn't want him. Grimm's got it. Robertson takes the three. Won't go, but Weiss looks like he comes down with it. Trying to reset, but they're all over him. And there we go, Adam Clark. Post move is good. 
pretty move, and you said that we don't see a lot of post moves anymore, but he did a great job. Drop step in middle, nice little lefty conversion. Mahalik has the answer on another tough mid-range shot. And that was extremely tough at the last minute. Big guy jumped up to get a hand, and he just released it a little bit higher, and he has that in his game, in his arsenal. He can do that. And now we see what Salkin has in their arsenal. And it's going to stay with Salkin. One minute left in the third here, 35-33. Tough game, Palmerton narrowly leading by two here. Eager to see what comes in off the inbound. You know, they probably talked about it at half. They're going back to what they used before. Just Donahue, just trying what he can. He's going to get Clark there with an offensive foul. Legal screen. And I think that was another great, you know, being at the right time at the right place there. Get that call and get your team the ball. Coach Snyder's, Snyder's arguing that he got his knee out. Mahalik's which caused it. Yeah, for sure. But now we got Salkin switching to a little, little zone. Maybe trying to stop the penetration of Palmerton's two go-to guys. And that's been something that's been uh, in contest all year long with this Palmerton team. When you have two scorers like Hoosier and Mahalik, it's very hard to stop when you have one score that's just as good as the other. And you're absolutely right. Tonight, they just both look like they're, you know, they're putting their team on the shoulders, going to refuse to lose, and I'm sure they're going to have the, hand, the ball in their hands this last 15 seconds here. Yeah, they're going to hold out. Hoosier makes the cut, but they're going to go to Leicester. And the timeout call. It's interesting you had Mahalik on his way to the basket for a layup. And Palmerton elects to take a timeout. While we're in timeout break, this game is brought to you by Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of providing the Lehigh Valley with convenient and reliable home heating oil delivery. Proud to support all District 11 athletics. Mention you heard, heard us on the D11 sports game broadcast and received $25 off your next delivery. Back to basketball, there's only 7.3 seconds in the third left, 35-33, Palmerton leads and has the ball. So Salkin was in zone, Chase. Uh, Palmerton calls timeout. Now let's see if they would change defenses after Palmerton drew up a play here. They're gonna let him open, they're gonna look to get a pick in the middle, Mahalik driving. Fade away, jumper won't go. Robinson with another Chuck, he's pretty. As difficult as that last shot was, uh, he had a chance at it. That's how good he is. Yeah, I mean, that's straight step back shot. And once again, you, we're at Whitehall High School, the Colonial League semifinals between the Saucon Panthers and the Palmerton Blue Bombers, who lead narrowly 35 33. We'll see you back in the fourth quarter. Since 1919, the name Reichenbach Oil has been synonymous with reliability and community. That's because for the past 100 years, we've been delivering heating oil to Lehigh Valley homes at ultra-competitive pricing seven days a week with auto delivery and easy payment options to fit your needs. And we offer same-day delivery. When you need oil delivered, think Reichenbach. 100 years of serving the Lehigh Valley community. Reichenbach Oil, delivery you can count on. It's St. Luke's Children's Hospital, ready to help all kids. They're keeping kids healthy, fixing us up, making us feel better, helping kids be the best they can be because it's about us. The kids, it's St. Luke's Children's Hospital. St. Luke's Children's Hospital is helping kids with everything from routine checkups to specialized care. It's here. It's great. Yeah. Welcome back to Whitehall High School for the Colony League semifinals between Palmerton and Saucon Valley. Palmerton's got the ball right now, trying to get someone to work up to 35-33 here in the fourth. And they get the answer. 
in and Leicester with the floater off the backboard puts him up four now, 37-33. Yeah, getting a little separation here up four. Critical possession here early in the fourth quarter for Salkin. They got to get a good look. And Robertson's going to go inside, pickpocketed the other way. And Palmerton doubled the post, got the kick out, loose ball. And it's definitely a physical game tonight. Both teams are bringing the energy for sure here. Just trying to get anything moving. And a good game to continue to be a great one. Robertson still dealing with that ankle issue. But he's toughing it out to try to finish it out. And he'll go down low to Grimm. Who gives it back. And outside layup off the gla glass will be good for Robertson. Beautiful running left-hander. Finished high off the glass. Big bucket, needed bucket for Salkin to stay close here. And the three attempt. Wide open three there from the corner. Won't go. That shot was by Jacob Grammis. And Salkin. Trying to get something moving there through the contact. Donahue drives in, trying to see if anyone's open. Robertson will go. And he will get fouled hard. Beautiful backdoor cut, cross court pass into the paint, as you'll see. Gonna get the ball up top and 11 makes a great backdoor pass. He gets fouled on the ground and then Mahalik comes over and make sure he does not get the ball up to the basket. Good hard foul. And in timeout, this game has been very exciting so far. And once again, the 11 Sports thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President and Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley and Allentown, PA, for sponsoring it. Of tonight's game, for all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer. Joseph Hoffmeyer. At 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor, Allentown, PA, 18101, Morgan Stanley Smith, Barney LLC, member SIPC. And as we resume back to basketball, thanks again to all sponsors that have us here. St. Luke's, that keeps us here. Morgan Stanley, Reichenbach, it's just a great time to be here, and thank you for all of them for letting it happen. With 622 in the fourth, Palmerton leads by two, 37-35. Great crowd here tonight. Again, I like to bust uh, your boss's chops, but three crews out tonight covering uh, three games, Mart's Hall, here in Caddy. Just, just great coverage with the A-team being at Whitehall. We yep. talked about that. Yep. Okay. And Robertson bringing his A game here from the line, 6-1. Brings him in within one, 37-36. Normally, I've been around this game and coach played a long time. I usually can have a good feel of where a game is going. I, I don't have that right now. I mean, just two evenly matched teams here playing hard, letting it all on the line. And another great rebound down low by Anthony. Anthony was thinking about it. Leister back to Anthony who gives it to Mihalik. Surprise he, he gave the ball up. And Grammis short. Robertson reads it well. Salkin off the got the numbers. Little off there on the pass, but dropping back. Mihalik finds his partner in crime, Hoosier. There will be Mahalik's three. Won't go. Will be rebounded by Caleb Grimm. 37-37. Tie game here. Quick shot there. That's who carried you, so you got to go with it. Robertson sinks another tough basket. Robertson's got 12 on the night coming into his own in the fourth here. The Salkin was down four. They answered. Got back to two. We'll see what Palmerton does here. 
Going to be a foul on Anthony. Going to go down. Sock and ball. Of course, with every call, with every uh, possession, as this gets tighter, crowds are, the crowd is getting more and more into the game, which I love. Yeah, I mean, when the crowd gets involved, it's fun. Always great to bring energy, and we've had a packed crowd with lots of energy here. As Salkin leads by two. They've been down parts of games, part of the game here. Not much leading. Let's see what they can do. With 4.50 to go, up by two, 39-37 at Whitehall High School. With a trip to freedom on the line. Sure, Salkin's going to try to pound the ball inside. And Robertson still trying to get something to go. Pick and roll. Got a mismatch. Didn't see it. That's, that's just a great move by Clark. Drives into the paint, squares his chest up, gives his team a four-point lead with four minutes to go. Yeah, Robertson with another great basket. Like I said, he's really coming into his own now, has the momentum on his side. They are up four now against Palmerton. Mahalik will give it to Anthony. Thinks about the mid-range shot. Mihalik will go for the another. Won't go, but is rebounded by Hoosier. Who do you think got the rebound? Not a surprise to me. Hoosier will let one fly. Robertson comes down with the rebound. He should have the numbers. Battered off, comes back down. Won't fall. Quick shot, quick shot. You're up four. Three and a half to go. And Mihalik will go to... And that is exactly what Palmerton needed there. 41-39, and here comes the replay. And if you're Palmerton, you're just getting to your, one of your best players. You're clearing out the right-hand side. Help came late, finished, and won. Got a chance to cut it to one. Mahalik's been very good from the line all night. Once again, he is now at his scoring point. And here we go, Mahalik gets the ball back in his hands. And the call, there was the contact on Donahue. Here comes the inbound. Salkin leads by three here. Shooter coming off the screen. Salkin does a good job defending it. I mean, if you're Salkin, it, you know, Mihalik or probably Mihalik's going to take the ball to the basket. You just got to get the ball out of his hands. Make somebody else beat you. Yeah, Mihalik's been doing what he's been doing all year, scoring. But now, let's see. Anthony gets big down low. That's exactly what you got to do. Get, get him, get Mihalik, give the ball up. Force somebody else to beat you. And we're getting in crunch time now as we go under three minutes. Salkin leads 41-39 here. Well, see, the key is don't let him get the ball back if you're Salkin. Anthony met at the rim. And people diving around. Hoosier came up with that ball. Another one won't go. And Staying with Palmerton. It's getting an aggressive, exciting basketball that we like to see here in the Colonial League semis. The Salkin coming in was supposed to be the, the bigger, stronger team on the glass. Not that time. Palmerton just doing a great job. And there it was. Going the other way. Salkin has a chance here. Let's see what they can do with 2.33 to go. 41-39, they lead. And Robertson will probably be the likely go-to here to try to get this offense going like he's been all night. But Salk has been relatively spread on the floor. Caleb Grimm with 13. Robertson with 14. Watch those two to see where it goes. Braden Weiss with the ball at the key, top of the key now. Salkin go into their high pick and roll. Look for 35 to roll to the basket right here. 
And that time, Mahalik sends it away. And so far tonight, Salkin's bigs have given Palmerton trouble at the rim, but this time, again, you just have to love Mahalik's heart. He comes over against Salkin's big and just sends it. He's a competitor. That is exactly what he does on the football field or basketball court, doing it all. Donahue takes the contact, and he will go to the line to try to expand this lead. And see now, Chase, you know, in the first three quarters, they let a lot of stuff go. Now you take it to the basket, you get bumped, foul. End of the game, you tend to get these calls. Salkin now has to hit foul shots. And the first one comes up a bit short for Donahue. But he's got one more. And at the half for the other game, Donahue sinks the first, but the other half for Notre Dame versus Northwestern. Notre Dame's up 31-21. But here, it's 42-39. Salkin leads with a minute and 47 to go. You know who's going to take it to the basket. <laughs> and he does. Mahalik with another answer. Every time this game gets close, he has an answer for him. Death, death taxes in Mahalik, what you can count on tonight. Three things. He's delivering. A little bit of a Ben Frank quote there. I like it. I like it. Donahue cuts through, loses the ball. Contact down low. Donahue gets it back, trying to reset. And they will reset here with a minute and 11 to go. Best thing about that play is I got you off your feet, off your seat, on your feet. You're up into the game. Love it. A lot of, lot of uh, just great hustle plays. Two, you have two teams here, both wanting desperately to get in that championship game Friday night and just laying it on the line. Great high school game here tonight. Yeah, I wish you could join me, but you're a little too large for this uh, tight well, area. If I stood up, my knees would hit the table, and I would take out the whole Palmerton uh, fans here and their, their cheering section and break all this equipment. I, it, can't do that. And once again... We want to give one more shout out to Reichenbach Oil Company. This game is brought to you by Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of riding the Lehigh Valley with convenient and reliable home heating oil delivery. Proud to support all District 11 athletics. Mention you heard of us on D11 Sports Game Broadcast. Receive $25 off your next delivery. So 25 or 50, I'm just checking. I believe it's 25. We, had a, we have a couple people call in, they're asking. Reichenbach Oil. And here we go. I it's going to be a good minute here if we don't get more. This could, this could go OT. Well, you heard it there. It could be predicted. Braun puts out his prediction. And oh, no. Could have been a violation there. I think he got it off <laughs> it just looks, in time. Yeah. He turned, Weiss turned to the official to get a time. It looked like they had a short conversation. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I thought the same thing. Surprised I mean, them. I, I thought he was going to look at the, the court, maybe get a pass and bound, but he looked to take the timeout. Once again, still in a minute of 11 as we go into another timeout. But we're excited to see what they turn to. Palmerton, we know who they're going to turn to. Mahalik has been there. He's got 23 on the night, and everyone else has kind of been scattered on points. But they, they have, but they've been contributing because they, they've made critical plays. Uh, Grammis has what? He has uh, eight points, I believe. Yeah, he has eight points tonight. His season average is seven. So they're getting contributions from other people. And that is all it takes. There's the inbound to the big Caleb Grimm in the corner. Donahue's going to reset it. And Donahue going to work as looks, the clock's winding down. Looks like Salkin's going to hold the ball. Force Palmer in the foul. This is not a good place to pick it up right there. He got slapped in the arm. And there it is. Robertson to Caleb Grimm. They're up three. And they want to run two guys in Mahalik here to get the ball out of his hands. But they don't. Mahalik's foot is caught on the line. Yes. Good. That's a two. 
And we are in the same scenario, just less time here. 35 seconds. He's definitely a two, he had his foot on the line. If this were college, we'd go to the monitor, we'd be here another 45, 50 minutes and miss the end of the Notre Dame game. Yeah, I know, I mean, something that in high school, you wish you had replay, you wish you could look back at this and see, but be you don't careful what you wish for, because in college, it, 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 they go to the monitor in the last two minutes, and true. It, it, it can uh, it's, really extend it. Yeah. And it's, it's a headache. Yes. And you know what? It, kill, it kills the flow of the game. And we do have good flow here tonight. We have great flow here tonight. Let's, you we'll know. Yeah, we'll take another look at it here just to yeah. make sure. Yeah, his foot's on the line. Man, narrowly. Oh, I, well, I think he had both feet over the line, to yeah. be honest. Great replay there. Great job by our camera camera people here tonight. And on it for two games. Not easy to do. No, didn't doing a great job here. And once again, you see Mahalik's shot. Looked like Kevin Durant against the Bucks a few years <laughs> back. Foot came up a little bit too big there. But Salkin with 28 seconds. Palmerton got a block. And a save. Okay. They're going to have to foul here. And That's a good call. He avoided the contact. Looked to be a rushed feet got put down there. And it'll send Adam Clark to the line as Palmerton fans are unhappy. See, Mahalik came over to take, take the charge. He was there. But at the last minute, the Salkin player moved to evade him to avoid him, and that's where the, the, uh, the block came in. And the pressure is setting on here at the free throw. He misses the first one, but Adam Clark can do it again on the second. You're Salkin here, both teams, you gotta box out, you gotta be aggressive on this shot. And Clark sadly... If you're Palmerton, this is where you wanna be. Malik, your best player with the ball. Six seconds, he's got to go. And Mahalik got fouled. He's going to be on the line, shooting two, down one with 4.3 seconds, which means make both, still give Salkin enough time to get down the floor and get a shot up. Your top scorer goes to the line. I've only seen him miss one, I think, tonight. He shoots very high from the line with 25 points tonight. Let's see what the senior veteran player that's led them through these scenarios do once more. Loud environment here, let's see what goes. Here comes the first free throw. It's good. Tie game here at 44. I mean, we do expect anything less now. Palmerton's putting two bigs in for rebounding. Defense, I guess. And let's because see. Because Salkin's gonna wanna get the ball and push, so you would think Palmer Palmer would want their quicker players in to cover full court. And but they went with their bigs. And it goes. And a scary injury as Anthony goes on, goes down. We hope he is all right. He went down hard. A, yeah. lot of, a lot of bodies in there for the rebound. Palmer to trainer out there attending to him. So we got 4.3 seconds left. Salkin's going to have to go to length of the floor, which is doable. And take what they get. They're not going to have time to get to the basket unless they hit it ahead. And as... We see if Anthony is all right, hopefully he is. We're gonna head to a quick break. Once again, we are here at the Colonial League semifinals at Whitehall.
Interested in a medical career? Consider St. Luke's if you want to be a doctor or a nurse. Based in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, we are the area's only four-year medical school and the largest provider of medical residencies and fellowships, and the country's longest-running school of nursing. Train at an organization that is nationally recognized in education, patient care, and quality. See why we are ranked the nation's number one teaching hospital. Where you train matters. The best doctors and nurses train at the best hospitals. St. Luke's University Health Network. Since 1919, the name Reichenbach Oil has been synonymous with reliability and community. That's because for the past 100 years, we've been delivering heating oil to Lehigh Valley homes at ultra-competitive pricing seven days a week with auto delivery and easy payment options to fit your needs. And we offer same-day delivery. When you need oil delivered, think Reichenbach. 100 years of serving the Lehigh Valley community. Reichenbach Oil. Delivery you can count on. And here we go, we are back. Anthony got up and he is off the court. Hopefully he is all right, but with 4.3 seconds to go, let's see what happens. Palmerton is up by one after Mihalik sunk two clutch free throws and he's got 27 points on the night. Salkin has time to try to make an answer. Bron, if you're Salkin, what are you, you going to do here? Well, Salkin came out there and set up their what they were going to do offensively. Palmerton saw it, didn't like what they had set up. Uh, Coach Egan made a, a substitution change. Again, uh, before that free throw, he put the two bigs in. But again, the bigs are going to have to cover full court here in these 4.3 seconds. That's maybe not what uh, Coach Egan wanted. That's why he called a timeout to get the uh, his personnel and he wants here. Now it's going to be interesting to see, is he going to put token pressure on to make them just dribble, you know, get the ball, advance the ball up the floor under token pressure. Are they going to drop back to half court and cover? Wait to see. I'm guessing they're going to put some token pressure on to give them a little resistance to get the ball up. Now, if you're socking, what you want to do is advance the ball as far as you can here towards half court to catch and then start, start what you're going to run. The deeper you catch it, obviously, the longer it's going to take you to get the ball up. Yeah, and we'll see what Salkin does because here we go. And there it is. Clock never started. The clock never started. The clock should be out. Obviously, 4.3 seconds went off the clock. Officials are going to stop, come over here and check it out, but game's over. Realistically, should be. And there it is. Palmerton Blue Bombers will go to freedom to have a shot once again at a title. And what an exciting ending here. That's all we can have here is excitement. And Coach Snyder still not in belief, but he's not happy about something. Yeah, he came all the way out onto the court. I believe I saw Palmerton hasn't won since 1995 a Colonial League title, and they will have a chance to do it on Friday at Freedom High School. They certainly uh, brought it tonight again. Kids just gave, both teams gave an incredible effort, but Mahalik in particular just, uh, he, uh, he brought it tonight. He put his team on his back, said we're getting to Freedom on Friday. Yeah, Mahalik, one heck of a player basketball and for football. But we're going to send it down to Dave, who's with Coach. Sorry, All right, we're with the winning coach, uh, Coach Egan. Uh, what a game, back and forth. They missed the two foul shots. Mahala gets the two. You guys win by one. You know, talk about that sequence. Oh, that was a wild game, but Matt Mahala, when, when the lights are on, he shows up, and he had two when two it counted. Uh, it's been, it was back and forth all night. Uh, credit to Saucon Valley. They're well coached. They're a great team. But uh, luckily, we got their number tonight. And talk about your defense. You know, they stepped up late when they needed it most. Talk about their effort. Yeah, we, we knew what they were going to do on, on the offensive end. They wanted to post up our guards. We were ready for it. We practiced on it all week. Uh, they, they got it a couple times. They're big, strong kids. But when it came down to it, uh, we showed up. And that's all you can ask for as a head coach.
Well, Palmerton goes two for two today. You move on to the finals. Congratulations, Coach. Hey, thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. All right, back up to you guys. Good job, Dave. Thank you, Dave. And soon after, we're going to get our player of the game, Matt Mahalik, who had 27 points tonight, two clutch free throws. As Coach Egan said, when the light shine brightest, so does he. And that is exactly what we saw tonight. And he was very clutch when they needed him there and earned his squad a trip to freedom. Just so, so great to see a young athlete who wants the ball in key situations. He wanted the ball every possession in that second half when it mattered and he delivered. It is uh, great to see with all this pressure, all this team's been through this year. And we're gonna That's send a great it. point. We're gonna send it down to Dave right now, who's with Matt. All right, with the player of the game, Matt Mahalik. Uh, listen, they missed the two foul shots. You made the two at the end, wild sequence at the end. Talk about that ending. You know, my emotions are running ecstatic right now, but uh, I felt, I definitely felt the pressure. It was very loud in this gym for those two free throws, but you know, that's what we work on at practice. We, we work on those pressure free throws and you know, for uh, moments like these, this is where you gotta come up big. And I, I, I did and I, I was not losing that game. I had that mindset and you know, I, I just capitalized on that free throw line and that, that was a great feeling. And not only you did on offense, defense, you had some huge blocks. You know, talk about your defense tonight. You know, I, uh, we're guarding Robertson. He's a really great player. Uh, he's shifty, and, you know, I had, to lock, I had to focus on locking him up, and, you know, it's, it's hard locking up a player like that. But if you, if you have the right mindset, you could do anything. So, you know, that was my mindset going into the game, uh, just playing really good defense on Robertson because, you know, he's going to get his own. But, you know, if I limit him, we're going to do good things, and that's what I did tonight. And uh, it was, the defensive intensity was there tonight, and that was great. And I talked to Coach, I said, uh, you guys go two for two today. The girls won earlier, you guys win. You know, what's that mean to your community? You know, the community shows out every game. Uh, their support is great. And, you know, th them packing the gym tonight, uh, it was definitely a momentum swing for us. Uh, them being loud out there and, you know, uh, they, got, they got one more game to sit through and that's a championship game. So uh, it's going to be exciting to go into freedom. And, you know, we're going to celebrate this win tonight, but Tomorrow, we got to focus on our next opponent. Opponent, I don't know who that is yet, but you know we got we got to be focused on that. Well, congratulations and good luck in the finals. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. You know, Matt. Matt, he said it. He said it, but we talked about the whole game. He was not going to allow his team to lose tonight, and he did not. And that is exactly the case. He talked about his next opponent. Notre Dame is up 49 to 35 against Northwestern, and once again, just a stellar performance here trip to freedom it's gonna be a palmerton doubleheader at freedom we'll see who the boys are gonna play and once again just a great night on friday at freedom high school that's all i have for you guys here at whitehall it's been a pleasure i was joined by sean riley and of course i'm gonna let him talk about himself because he's been a pleasure to work with tonight al de carlo do we have to read something about al now no. no, me? Oh, okay. Of no. course. It was my a pleasure to work with you guys. I always enjoy it. Two great games. Uh, if you guys are working the game on a Friday night, have a blast. Have a game. And that's Braun Holland there. And thanks for him being my color commentator. And once again, SMMV and St. Luke's for putting on this great show. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Make sure you guys stay tuned for Friday for the championship game. Have a great night, everyone.